to the Rejoice family and those beyond our Rejoice family. It's hard to believe we're only a week and a half into this this time where we are dealing with the, the social distancing uh, that's related to the, the COVID-19. And, and there are so many things that we could talk about that would be, I think, very heavy. And I, I do think that one of the things I need to talk about at some point is the reality that one of the things that we need to name that we're going through all of us at some way at this point is grief. But I know I'm not quite ready to do that yet. Um, and so I'm going to do something a little bit lighter today. Uh, I think I need to talk a little bit about, you know, the reality that we're in this for a long haul. Uh, I do want to keep us oriented and fixed on hope. We are a people of hope. We are a resurrection people that, I mean, you, we come at this and say that the world is ending. The, the world is changing. We need to acknowledge that the world is changing. And, and the world as we know it may end in some respects. You know, the world is going to change in relation to this, just like the world changed in relation to 9-11 um, or, um, or other big events that have happened in the midst of our lives. But, but again, we are people of hope, and hope is something that is not always easy. I think it's one of the harder emotions. And so Paul writes in Romans 8, um, this is uh, verse 24 and 25, For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. So as I was thinking about this, I, this reality that we're in this for the long haul, I, uh, I recalled a funny story from, from several years ago from my time in the Army. So when I was in 3rd um, in Squadron, 2nd Cav, uh, we had a squadron commander who was a marathon runner, uh, Colonel John Shea, and he, uh, he came up with this competition and the, the competition was to beat his score in this. So, you know, there was at the front end, there was an army physical fitness test. So you have push ups and you have sit ups. And then instead of the normal two mile run, which is part of the uh, army physical, physical fitness test, you had a four mile run. And then after that, you uh, would put on all your gear. And then it was a uh, basically a 12 mile ruck march, which, um, you know, you had to do it in a minimum. You had to do it in, in no more than four hours. We were supposed to try and do it in under three. So again, we go through this and again, I was younger. I was in really good shape at this point. So go through and doing really well on the two, the, the push-ups, the sit-ups, the four mile run. Uh, we get geared up and me and a, another young lieutenant, we take off and we start running on this uh, on this 12 mile ruck run. So again, you've got 50 pounds of gear on your back, you've got your full uniform on, you've got your weapon, you've got everything, and you're, you're going. And so it's 12 miles. And the first six miles was downhill. Now it's not a steep downhill, but it's a slow grade, and you don't notice it so much when you're going downhill, you notice it when you're coming back up. So me and this uh, other young lieutenant, he was from the artillery uh, battery, we start running, we're going, we're going, we hit the turnaround point, we start coming back. And then about probably mile eight, both of our legs just stopped. You know, and, and for the last third of it, the last four miles, it was literally one foot in front of the other. And the people who we put a lot of distance in started to catch up to us and eventually they, they passed us. Now, we were not the last people to finish. We our legs eventually limbered up again. We got to the end. We uh, we both ended up uh, with a you know score of this event that, that exceeded our, our squadron commander. But but again, I think part of it is if we would have been smart, we would have paced ourselves. We would have said, you know, this is what is ahead of us, and we need to pace ourselves accordingly for that. So so again, one of the uh, one of the realities of, you know, even the Ten Commandments where it talks about remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. The Sabbath is about rest. And I know that a lot of us are trying new things at this time or you're adapting to having kids at home, maybe you being at home all the time. Some of us may be at the point where, you know, because we work in various fields that require us to be there, we're having to work longer. Other times we're having to just make a lot of adjustments and it just seems like every time you try something new, it, um, 
you know, it takes a lot more energy than what you think it will take. But then also, uh, even if you're just at home, whatever you're doing, whether you're working harder or whether you're not having to work at all, whether you're having to adjust to kids being in the house, whether you're having to adjust to you being in the house, we're in this for a while. This is not going to be over this week, um, which I hate to, to break it to people, but we're not. Um, we're in this for... Um, we're in this for the weeks to come, and I, no one, I think, really knows exactly how long that's going to be. So we'll talk about a little bit more about that grief in upcoming days, but, but the reality is take your rest. Take the times to, to take a deep breath. There may be times where you need to have some time to yourself to just, you know, to grieve the changes that you've had to go through in the last couple of days. It's not been easy, but we are in this together, and we hope. We hope not for what we see, but we do believe this is not all the reality that we will ever experience. We know that we will see one another again, that we will be, um, that we will have some of the experience, things that we've had in the past, some of, some of the things that we've had in the past that we took for granted will now all of a sudden become much more valuable. And hopefully we can learn in this time. So again, brothers and sisters, know you remain in my thoughts and prayers, um, and I continue to, to long for that day when we can be together again.